What's up, everybody? We are here. We're doing Mama's Boys episode number three, and I have Allison and Jordan Pfeiffer. Thank you for having us. No, it's great. Thank you. It's good because um, I know you guys as as your story is interesting. It's it, you, there's not a more verbal woman than this person. I, I don't like. Yeah. She's one of the the ones that like. I sat there when I was was coming up with the concept. Right, I'm like sitting there going like, who are some of the moms that I really want to get the juicy juice stuff from? Like like, oh, she's gonna be. You know, she's got stories. This one's got stories. So Jen was obviously one of them. Girl, you know, um, Tashar was one. She's over at Sunnyside, obviously she Jen and Mountain View. But like there, it's just all over the over the place, kind of interesting. So I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and get you guys on here. So I wanted to hear parents' stories, mom stories about obviously the involvement with their children going through the high school years, if not just your whole football career. Obviously, now you going off into college where you're at Carroll. Yep. Yeah, we're rocking the orange for Carol right now. Sure thing. Um, even though this is probably one of the worst colors for a fat man to wear, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I look like the '76 ball. Um, for those who know, right? I try, I try to stay away from orange. It's not, it's not in my color wheel. And not, not on, on top of that. I, I'm, I got burnt, so I'm going to take these off. Um, yeah, not only that, I was up at the the, the uh, uh, Lake Forest yeah. uh, showcase yesterday and talking to parents and everything like that, and. I got burnt. I guess no joke. I'm like, Ugh. you know how it is. Like you go out and we're the like, you know, all of a sudden I got red and orange going. It's not good. I missed the camp, but not that much. That was that was one of the first ones we did, and that was that was rough. It's hot out there. It's, it's it reminds. Did you do track? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was supposed to do it all four years, but I did it three. So right. You know how when you go to a, like a track event, and it's like every school's represented. And you got parents in the stands and everybody's here and they're walking on this just like organized chaos yep. mm -hmm. you know that's what football camps remind me of a little bit yeah because yeah. you have these kids that come out with all their like school you know like jerseys and stuff like that or or like the, you know they're um, from from this school and then next thing you know they're all wearing like it becomes a sea of red because they're all wearing the camp shirts and stuff like that. Yeah, right. until the end, and then everybody's half naked because they're dying because <laughs> it's hot. And not only that, it's like the camps at what? Like we're, we were it started around 11 o'clock or something like that, you know, whatever. It's like prime time hotness, you know what I mean? Well, especially and in Phoenix. In yeah. Phoenix, on turf. Yeah, most of the camps are up in Phoenix, so right. it's pretty hot up there. And I felt bad because, like, I'm sitting with these like with these moms like at the end right we're out walking with our kids because I'm like hey make sure they take pictures and all this other stuff and my feet are burning in the few minutes that I'm out there mm -hmm. I'm like these poor son of bitches out here with their cleats on their plastic cleats going like I'm like and then they're they're diving into the the the, 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 the turf. Yeah, yeah the turf the, the little rubber like I'm like man God bless your soul bro God yeah, bless your soul his shit melted in uh oh I'm sorry I said that oh um, I don't care okay at uh, what was it ACU what yeah, that? I went through three pairs of cleats between melted. ACU and uh, Lake Forest wasn't bad, but I can't remember where the other one was. That one was at Pinnacle, though. That was grass. Okay, yeah. Because Lake Forest was hot, but it didn't burn my cleats up. But ACU, because when I went there for those camps, they had just put in that new turf. Right. So, I mean, they had Oof. just tons of rubber on the grass. So, I mean. And you're torching. Your oh, feet yeah. are like, help me. I had blisters all over my feet. Did you go to, like, the pool afterwards and? I went to bed. <laughs> I just went to bed. <laughs> right? You just crashed. You're like, oh, good shit. Dude, I had yeah. him and another young kid in the car. Forgot who we had with us from Saguaro. Ethan. Ethan yeah. from Saguaro. Right? They were out. Asked out in the backseat the whole way. Home. Done. Yeah, done. They were, done. They were It's a lot. So, going to camps. All right, I'm going to bring this up. You said you just took Ethan, right? Yeah, we had taken Ethan. One of the things, like last, just this, just yesterday, while I was sitting there preaching to some of these parents, is that it's really sad that the camps are sometimes the opportunities for these kids to be seen, if not be seen, at least be educated and informed about schools. Like you, for example, you learned about Hastings College mm -hmm. when you went to the Lake Forest camp. Like, is what, what you're going to kind of tell me there? Is that um, if 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 you guys never saw a flyer, if somebody like like Rodney didn't help you out knowing some of these things, 
you'd never go. Yet I go up there and I see this like this time actually had a lot more south, you know, southern Arizona presence to it. Mm-hmm. But I was sitting there going like, there's 25 high schools in Tucson alone. 25. If each one of them would send five to ten kids, crazy. You got 250 kids representing Southern Arizona, mm-hmm. taking reps, getting in front of coaches, and so on. And not only that, if a college or if a high school coach went with the kids, let's say, for instance, you were under uh, McKee's regime kind of thing or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if McKee goes up there with like, like five to ten kids from Saguaro, and McKee's talking to those coaches and saying, hey, you know, how do I get your guys' information, connections, so on and so on, or hey, how do I get you know, you know, this is one of our kids right here coming up right now, you know, or something like that, kind of helping out with soliciting the kids from that school. All of a sudden, that helps, mm. and we're not doing that. No, the only way I found out, because I wasn't with Rodney for right. the Lake Forest. I met Rodney at Lake Forest when Jordan was out there. The only way I knew about Lake Forest was because of you. The school never told us, the coaches never told us. So I had no knowledge, but finding you through Facebook and you posting those is how we ended up going to Lake Forest and signed okay. up for it. Um, and then just that just spread into Rodney and everything. But yeah, I mean, the first camp that we took him to, he got an offer right off the bat from Hastings. I mean, I know that, they, I will say that, to be honest, they were aware of him prior to the camp right um because scotty did he had a relationship with i believe it was the head coach if i'm not Mm. mistaken but i mean they came out to that camp and saw jordan's performance and that's when they they gave him the offer but yeah we wouldn't have had any knowledge had it not been for you it also helps that you kind of fit the box that they're looking for yeah sure so like go ahead what's your your stat like your about about six four two forty ish right now so i mean right but at the time you know i was Still growing as a senior, junior, going into my senior year. So, I mean, I was about 6'3", 220-ish. So, I mean, okay. for what they were recruiting me for was good. So, I mean, you know. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, it becomes harder, obviously, when you, you, you don't match the box. Like, you're, you're saying you were 6'3", 220. Right. You know, and you're playing at that time. You were playing in which position or role? Uh, defensive end and tight end, but they recruited me for tight end. So. Right. So, you, you got a good size box on you. Right. And so, and then, you like... What people don't understand is, like, as we get closer to, like, hey, look, you're a little shorter, you're 5'10", or stuff like that. Now you got to be even that much better talented-wise to kind of be like, hey, look, check me out, because you got to be a stud, Mm -hmm. you know. But if you're not putting yourself in front of the opportunities to be seen by a coach or learning how to find that connection to coaches, and one of the things you were telling me earlier was, too, was, like, Twitter played a huge role for you massive role in his recruiting and I'll, I'll definitely let him chime in on that too but he is not a social media kid wants nothing to do with social media he'll look well, at well that's it. because you post enough pictures of him for <laughs> like i know yeah. that for a fact oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm proud i've got i've got every reason to be proud of him but he he wanted no part of it and i said if you want to make it you're gonna have to get on social media right the right way i'll be posting stupid stuff don't be, you know, I said, but you've got to strictly focus on putting your name out there because that's where they're searching. And he was like, I don't know. And sure enough, as soon as he opened that Twitter account, or he had it, but as soon as he became active on it and right. started posting, instantly. I mean, I want to say, so Hastings' offer came in first. We signed up with Rodney, I, I want to say, a week after that. And then within two days of being on Twitter with Rodney's help and assistance, Right. Shout out to Game Time, by the way. He had offers coming in. He had one or two a week for so, months. So let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. All right. Obviously, we all know about kids who, who obviously you got to put your time in in the classroom. Right. Obviously, you got to put your time out on the football field. Mm-hmm. How much time do you put into your, your social media Twitter game? I mean, it's a big thing because, uh, you know, with all these colleges and depending on where you kind of what region you want to kind of go to right. really kind of depends on certain things. Like if you want to stay close, I mean, getting open visits and, and going to see these colleges and coaches is a lot easier. But for a guy like me where I wanted to venture out into like the Midwest, I mean, the only way to get in touch with those coaches is by phone call or Twitter. So, I mean, posting everything. I mean, it could be lifting. Um, it could be just your highlight tape, making sure that's out at all times. Um, if a coach texts you or sends you something, 
Um, or if you're even going to a camp, making sure you're posting that, letting other coaches know that you're going to be at that camp. I mean, it's huge. So, I mean, it's not something that I did every single day. But, I mean, when you're in contact with coaches, they're going to they're gonna hit you up on there. And, I mean, if you're – I hear it all the time from other college coaches. I mean, if you're vacant in your Twitter game or your social media game, I mean, you're not going to get offers. You're not going to get looked at. Right. I mean, they're going to send you a message. If you don't respond in, like, a week or two, I mean, they're on to the next guy. I mean, it's a – it's a whole pool of guys, so I mean, Twitter's pretty pretty big, right? So I mean, it was it, it, it's difficult because like I try to tell people, it's like be clear, be informative at the same time, clear. Like in your bios, make sure you're posting your height, weight. You know, if you got your your a good GPA that you want to kind of solicitate, post that. Um, you know, any other sports like you, you were doing track, mm -hmm. um, posting those kind of things, those attributes in your bio and stuff like that. And then having that link to your huddle film and stuff like that all on your Twitter account. Because what people don't understand sometimes about Twitter is that it's literally your storefront mm -hmm. and you're the product that you're trying to sell out of it. So if you're if you're going to throw a bunch of junk posts, then realize they, they're going to sit there and go, oh, this is junk. I don't want to see this, right. you know, because. They're, they're getting notifications. And the tag game, we all know the tag game is, like, huge. Like, it's one thing to have a Twitter account. It's another to utilize it as for the tag game because that's where you're going to really get that information out there mm -hmm. with, with the kids and stuff. So, I mean, I know that's solid. That's hard. Um, it's hard, but here's a little tidbit that for anybody that's interested in the future, but... For Jordan, we set it up on his phone. He has an iPhone, but you can do it on any phone. In notes, with all the coaches' handles, literally right there. So right. rather than having to figure out everybody's handles, he went. He would go right to his notes, hit copy, and then go right to paste in Twitter, and he'd get okay. twenty or twenty-five of them tagged at one time. Made it so much easier. So what you did was you had pretty much all your tags already pasted up on some. So you were, if you did something or achievement, you just kind of ta you know, copy paste. Yeah, I mean, Rodney helped me a lot out with that. I mean, that's not something that I just came up with, but I mean, he just emphasized being extremely organized because I right. mean, that's your whole persona. I mean, these coaches have most likely never met you in person. So how you display everything about yourself is kind of how they see you from the get go. So, I mean, if you have a sloppy Twitter page with just your name and nothing else and just a few highlight tapes or clips, I mean, they're not going to be super interested. So, I mean, and like with the tag game, like you said, I mean, if you're if you're missing out on coaches, you're missing out on opportunities. So opportunity is the biggest thing. So I always try to keep it super organized. So it just makes it uh, now, a lot easier. Carroll's a Division three, right? Correct. So that's obviously like a real big Division three is big on GPAs. Mm. Huge. So and, and mom, hop in on this because you know a lot more about the financial aspect of it all. So here you get your gpa and what was your gpa at high school anyway i finished with a 3.5 three five no it was 363 three. well oh, yeah, three, six, three. something along those lines <laughs> i still right. have the transfer hey, so, so like we'll get to that right so you get you, you graduate with a with a cumulative for over you know, all three years of a 363 three, right mm. is that what you're saying and how much was that in value financially for tarot for carol it was incredibly valuable uh i can't really emphasize grades enough grades are just that much um important they're just as important right. as how you perform on that field if not even more important right um if you're a guy that goes to a school um just for instance like an naia i mean you're building that scholarship and with d3 you stack scholarships so your academics matter so much to be able to lessen that cost because i mean college is expensive no matter where you go right nobody most people can't just shell out forty thousand dollars a year right. to take you to school. So I mean, just having those grades, stacking those scholarships, uh, along with athletic scholarships that you can get, I mean, it just makes it a hell of a lot easier for yourself. So what, uh, with your GPA where it was, how much scholarship money did you get per year? Um, so through D three, I mostly got a full ride. Okay, uh, basically almost a full ride. But the ride. tuition at your school is like how much? It's about. It's, four, it's fifty-seven thousand a year. Okay. With yeah. every that's everything. Because some people, when they hear like you know um, scholarships or tuition coverage, they don't realize that there's 
added things, right? Like right? like so dorms like, and dorms, everything, housing, fooding, food, uh, food parking, all of that stuff. So everything in total came. It's just shy of fifty-seven thousand. And how much did they cover? He's covered. It's cost out of my pocket for the year, fat zero. So almost fifty-seven thousand dollars off yeah. of your grades. And and that's mostly grades, but you know, FAFSA plays a huge part in that. Yeah, and, you and okay, you got the FAFSA. And stackable aid, with right. which my school they do that. Not every D three school does that. You can stack your aid. Right. So it just became incredibly helpful through other athletic scholarships, but mostly my academics took up like ninety five percent of that chunk. So, so and he got huge. scholarships from Suaro as well. I think he got four. So huge to do huge. the grades. Just yeah. I mean You can't emphasize it enough. Can't. Like wow. Yeah. Like I mean, like people don't get it. It's like yeah. so what do you guys think would have been a big learning, like something something that would have been tangible during your high school years to help you guys with this whole process of getting to a college that wasn't there that you would have liked to see from your school? More emphasis from the beginning. I didn't know that I was going to play college football till my senior year. I didn't take it that serious. Like I always loved football, but I never took it serious. So my freshman, sophomore year, I didn't really take academics seriously. I had about a 2.8 GPA, right. which really doesn't get you much in, in college. But I wish somebody would have told me way sooner and emphasized it a lot quicker that Academics matter so one. much Boom. more than the stats you put up on the field. Right, day one. Hey yeah. guys, look. As soon as you come in, I love just the let fact that you guys are going to play football. But not only are we going to be, we're going to be ath- academically sound before we're a football sound kind of thing. You mm-hmm. and then, the, do you think it helps you also play in other sports? Of course. Um, I just think taking academics that much serious, that serious, uh, just helps you like overall. I feel like it just makes you that much better. I mean, you're just being a student athlete is not easy, uh, especially in college, but even in high school, it's not, especially being a student athlete in multi sports. Um, right. So it just, I think it helps out a lot, kind of keeps you organized throughout your high school career. Kind of. So look at, yeah. so Jordan's sitting here looking at freshman Jordan. Mm. What would you have told him, like, hey, out the gate, obviously the school stuff, you just said that. Um, are you sitting there saying, like, hey, hit the, be a, a gym rat? Mm. Are you saying, uh, make sure you try and stuff like track or playing other sports. Are, are you telling yourself that if you're looking back at the incoming freshman you? Yeah, I think playing multiple sports, testing out everything. Uh, right. It doesn't have to just be football. Testing out everything, uh, I think you really find what you're really interested in. Right. And even some different clubs and stuff like that, I think, is really big. Um, challenge yourself academically uh, is really big because um, it only helps you. I mean, if, if you're not going to go to college, I mean, it'll help you down the line. Well, um, no matter what you do, yeah. if you're going to school, right? So, I mean, that and, uh, yeah, I mean. Do you wish that there was something placed in schools like a, a 3.0 club? Absolutely. Like, 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 seriously. We talked about that before. Yeah, we did. We have talked about it. Yeah. But, like, do you wish they would have some kind of, like, encouragement to, like, Hey, look, guys, it's it's one thing to educate a kid because normally we t- like ed- educating my children. I have four of them. Right. So like educating your kids is like, yeah, you really should do this. It kind of goes out the other air. Mm-hmm. But if you had like a cl- like some kind of a ward or or potential goal club kind of thing like that, do you feel it would drive kids? I think it would help. I, it's, it's just unfortunately, in my opinion at this time, and I may catch flack for it, and I really don't give a shit. Okay. But unfortunately at this time, People don't boast about the good things with kids, right? Right. There's not, and if you do, you're wrong. So I think that you know we they don't want to overpopulate the grades. They don't want to you know put the kids up here that should be up here, should be looked at, and should be the ones that are are setting an example for the younger grades coming in, right? Right. They don't do that anymore because it's it's a, everybody gets a trophy type of system now, and so for me, I think. We need to get back to that, to where we do need to recognize, and not because he's my kid, right? Like he's right. done with school, I'm not focused on that. Right. I'm t- We need to focus on the kids that are doing good. Which we bring need to give them more of of our time, more of our energy, right. because everybody's like, oh, they're good kids, so they're fine. We just leave them over there. Well, right. To, 
That's it's not almost working. like we focus more on the troubled kids, troubled kids, and right. those who like almost even the ones who just like if you're successful, like you're if you're not a problem, we're not going to focus on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're troubled, man, we gotta we gotta come up with new classes. We got IEPs. We got all this other stuff. Right. You know, let, let's justify why they're troubled, rather than sitting there and praising the kids that are that are actually doing well. Right. Now, I don't have a problem with saying, hey, look, you have a problem. Let's work with you. Yeah, I mean, God like, knows. I, I was just, like, like I, I, right? I, I, I have no problem like, like making myself a joke. I was a special ed kid, like I had still a. Le- I am special ed still, <laughs> um, but like I had a learned disability that I found out going into my sophomore year. I had a, a form of dyslexia. It was a retention disorder. Um, I jumped through three different high schools, which made that so much easier. Like, yeah, <laughs> go to three different schools, you'll be better <laughs> off, right? So, like, I had my personal problems and stuff like that. And it's, it's really hard to find your foundation when your parents are just saying, hey, look, you know what? My kid's got a problem. What's the best move for me? Because they have no clue. They got, they're trying to feed you. Mm-hmm. They're trying to do all this other stuff. So by the time they figure out, hey, look, you know what? I, I need to, maybe these are the things, or I need to exhaust myself into these things to help them. It's like, high school's gone. You know, oh, okay, so fend for yourself from there. But, I mean, it's it's just frustrating. You well, know? it is because you utilize, okay, so you have the good kids with good grades, right? Right. Utilize them. Yeah. Utilize them to help those who are not. Tutoring, stuff yeah, like that, tutoring, maybe? tutoring, having, you know, we have the Big Brothers, Big Sisters program, but we don't have that in a high school, right? To where you have the, the, the kids Smart that kids, dumb kids, kids program, what do you want to call it? I don't know. <laughs> dumb and dumber? I'm, ju- I'm joking, it's a joke. It's but a joke. But let them help, you know? They're, no, no, I get because it. Because that, that is somebody that you want to look at and say, hey, you know what? They're, they can help me. They can help right. guide me through it. So well, let and, the schools utilize. And it. typically, when we're when when a child is academically successful, right? Those who struggle academically, they're going to lash out in different ways. Like you're right. not cool, you're not hip, you know. Like you you probably took slack on certain things with your when you're studying, doing other things. I don't know, mm-hmm. um, but I would assume it's kind of difficult sometimes to be not only successful on the football field be successful in the classroom i mean classroom and then still be socially you know successful i mean it's got to probably probably be challenges across the board which i don't whatever whatever those are i mean i wasn't i missed three of them i was probably successful at one of them but that was probably about the best i ever did me too yeah yeah but but you know so being with all that said what as a mother what did you do to help jordan and his school out the time of course that like you were involved well for me with George I'm a single parent so I'm gonna start right off telling everybody that um, been single parent from day one with him and if you think single parents can't do it I call bullshit because you can and he's a perfect example of the time and the effort that you put into your kids um, for me I didn't take any nonsense from him he knew my rules, my rules were you're gonna have good grades because you're capable, right? right? It wasn't, I'm gonna force him to get good grades. Right. I know you're capable of getting good grades. Will I accept to see from you if you charge your hardest? Yeah, but we're gonna talk about that because that's still not a good, good enough grade. Right. We're gonna try harder. Um, I was strict with him on curfews and stuff. He had his freedom, but um, I just, I don't know. I guess I drilled into his head that he's worth worth it he's worth it all and he's worth more right. and to and to work really hard as far as with with the football he never played a lick of football before ninth grade right so he started so you started, started high freshman. school you high didn't school. play f- like pop warner football Mm-mm. Mm-mm. and yet here you are playing you know ncaa football yeah, yeah. thank god yeah right that was a huge that's and that was another huge part of it and i know i had asked your permission if we could bring that up but god played another role in it and no discredit to anybody else who may not believe, but for us it worked, and it was a good foundation for him, and it kept him grounded. Right. And uh, it's brought him to where he's at today, and for us, that's important. Our faith was important. So so let me ask, did you, when you go into high school, right, we've already got the whole, you should be saying this to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. How tall are you? Like, well, mm-hmm. give, give me some of your, like, is my son walked in at 5'5". Five, five. Mm-hmm. So how, how tall were you when you walked into high school? I walked in about five eight ish. Okay. So I had a big growth spurt about my junior year. Right. I was about six foot my sophomore year. So when your freshman coach was it Lucius? 
It was Louis. It was yeah. uh, no, it was Levi. Oh, oh, it was, it was Levi, Levi first. Levi. Yeah, which Levi. which shout outs to Levi because so Levi, Levi actually is a Carol uh, yeah. alum. Alum. So yeah. like yeah, so cool that you wound up at his. So is is Levi sitting there like Jordan's gonna be one of my studs. <laughs> Or was or was he like? No, everybody. Who's thought that Jordan scrawny was a, white kid that just walked out like a drunk giraffe? The way he nice. did it, it was hard. You were a drunk I never, giraffe. I never got a ton of attention until my senior year after right. putting in just tons of work. I was always just a skinny kid, just a guy that, just a role player. You know, right. I, w- I would do my role, and I would we would win games and right. lose games and whatnot. But I mean, it wasn't until my senior year or my junior year, going into my senior year. That COVID so, spurt, clicks. you know, I had the time to really lock in and work on my mental state and physical state, and I got, you know, recognition my senior year. And you, you know, you point out a good valid point. You had the COVID season. Mm-hmm. So how did that impact you? Tremendously. I mean, for for everybody, it was new. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody knew how to react to it. Right. It was all kind of on the fly. Um, I was shortened to three games that season. Right. Um, Unfortunately, we lost all of them, but you learned so much from that time. Um, like I said, I got time to work on myself physically, uh, hit the gym a lot, you know, and, and get some speed training in with Coach Lou. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, but then the mental game, you know, it was hard for everybody. Um, with everything being shut down, you being secluded to your, 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 your home, um, with the sickness going around, that's killing everybody. Uh, it was just difficult, but it gave me time to work on myself, which I mean, it sounds crazy, but I'm very glad that COVID year happened for me. Okay. I think it helped me a lot. So you took it as like a time to self-reflect mm-hmm. and kind of build off the COVID year because obviously you're not playing. Another thing that you kind of just mentioned too, you went 0-3 that year, mm-hmm. right? You don't come from a program that's really a winning program at that point in time. Right. Like you guys, even your senior year, you went what? What was it? We year? went one and eight my senior year. One and eight. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I had to be on on like one of the best teams in town. Mm-hmm. If you put in the groundwork, you actually got the opportunities to play at the next level. Right. But how was it, how is it in the morale of the school, right? So this is another thing that I'm really happy to see the regions kind of being broken up the way they are this year, mm. where they have the stronger kind of teams placed in one region and the weaker in the division placed in another, is that like there's a lot of schools that go through defeat every week. Like, and it takes a strong athlete. It's easy to be that athlete on the team that wins all the time mm-hmm. because, like, you can always put your hand up and say, we got another one. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's harder to be those kids. Like, for instance, though, um, I want to say I want to say his name. I can't think of uh, Over at uh, – parents going to hate me. Over at Catalina. You know, he was a part of the group, too, of the, the, the Game Time kids. Um can't think of the kid's name. But they, I don't think he won a game, maybe one, his whole career in high school. Mm-hmm. And then he wound up going somewhere and playing. Yeah. Um, like, how did? How is the morale in the hallways going up and down a Saguaro football? Like, were the, were the kids like, yeah, another week? Or were they like, Yo, y'all suck? Yeah, I mean, my freshman, sophomore year, we were good. That was about the last time we've been good in a fat minute. You know, going to the Final Four and whatnot. My junior year, going 0 and 3. Nothing in the halls because we were all online. But you know, I have friends all around the school. Everyone's asking me, "When are you guys going to win a game?" You know, you're getting teased all the time because, you know, the team record they think reflects you personally as a right. player. So I mean, you always got that. And then my senior year, going 1 and 8. Um, you know, there was the administrators weren't bought into it. They didn't really care about football. They never really had. Um, the students that were supposed to be like in our student section that are supposed to be hyping us up, you know, we have no band. The students hadn't realized what a like a real high school football game is because COVID took that away from right, them. Right. So, I mean, they, they kind of grew up into an undershadowed kind of not knowing what to do. So they obviously they, they're not yeah. echoing the, your freshman, sophomore year. There was no football culture. Because that was when you were striving strong so on and so on mm. but with the covid season killing it and then the eight and one i mean the one and eight season mm. being kind of that pattern you know i mean you're literally telling me right now you went 11 and one mm. you know varsity years right, right. for the most part did yeah. you play varsity your sophomore year 
My just on special teams, I was okay. not. So, on so pretty much your varsity career was one in eleven. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, obviously, spirits and morale at the school, like you said too, like the bands, not even they're non-existent. They don't even exist. Yeah. yeah. So, because there's so much that goes into to high school football. I mean, it's not just the team, but you got right. the band, the student section, the it's, parents it's support, the administrators. You know, publicizing the game. I mean, nobody at my time really cared about football because I mean, we sucked at the time. I mean, you know, what's sad is that the atmosphere of the football game mm. reflects the atmosphere of your school. Hundred percent. Because I think there's no other sport, none, in high school that reflects the school like their football programs. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care if you're great at baseball. Who goes to the baseball games? Right. And I'm not taking slashes at them. Right. Like, like I'm just being so real. Different. Like, okay, your basketball, you, that might be, like, the second one. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're striving in, 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 in wrestling, you, you're not having a big student, you know, Turnout, section. Yeah. Like, that, that doesn't exist at a, at, a, at a track and field event. You know, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, the atmosphere, the culture of a school, the culture of the community, everything like that reflects, to me, off of the, the football game. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, just to kind of hear how bummed out it was. Well, it, it got worse last year. I went to all the, the Saguaro games last year, even though he wasn't there playing. I went to support the other yeah, kids. Because they, it was hard again last year. Yeah, I mean, I sat, we, I sat with you at one of the games, and right. I, the, the amount of open seats in the bleachers was insanity. There was none. There was no. But, I mean, what is there to expect from a team that goes, you know, 1-11 the last two years? Right. I mean, you nobody wants to go to that. Well, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, hey, look, we don't care as a student body, the kids that are remaining, that maybe their experiences were your, your their freshman and sophomore year was your junior, senior year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, our football team's always sucked. Right. They don't understand that once uh, once upon a time, it was actually a, a, a great program, kind mm -hmm. of thing like that. Um, talking about that, too, I mean, you were involved with the Booster Club. I wasn't on it, but I, I was... I would help. Right. I would help. I would bring the food. Like a lot of the, the time was my. I, in order to not have to work the snack bar, the option was you either donate food or you work the snack bar. And I went with donate the food every time because I wanted to be out to watch him play. Right. Um, but yeah, I was I was involved in it, and we you know um, I think his first I think his freshman year we had Shelly. She was great at boosters. Okay. Uh, she was wonderful. And then we went to, who did we have after that? We had, um, I can't remember. I can't remember her name, but she was great too, but it wasn't, it wasn't hyped up. Then we had Alicia Celentano. She did Jordan's Jew, his senior year. And that was good. So the boosters for that time was really good. We had a right. lot of involvement, um, but we just didn't get the help, right? Like you, it's the same parents constantly that would support a team of 100 plus kids. You've got four or five parents that it's always, we're always the ones that have to pull it together. So, and you got, and the, and the crazy part is there's like, how many kids on your football team? When 40? I was a senior, we were about 30, 50, 40? 50 to 60 okay. deep. 50, 60? At one yeah. point. And we got five parents involved? Five, yeah. yeah, feeding all those kids. Again, and then like like I've had on on a lot of the past shows is that we've talked about how important team meals were. Mm. It's Be huge because like morale. I mean, this is a huge moment not only for you guys to bond, but sometimes it's the only meal the meal that this kid's get. gonna probably gonna get. Right. You know that kind of thing. Um, you know, I think that's where it lacks though too. Like we were talking about. In regards to, I'm using Saguaro because that's where he went, but the lack of morale out at the games and stuff, when you don't have that involvement, and it comes down to the boosters, and it comes down to the team dinners and everything, when you don't have that involvement or that excitement, that falls off onto the kids on the field. Right. They know it. They feel it. You know, um, they miss it. And when you have the same, again, the same five or six parents that are constantly helping, what? It makes it hard, and it's sad for the kids whose parents that don't show up, right? And I get that not everybody can show up. I'm lucky I was able to to make those arrangements. I swore right. I would never miss a game, but not everybody's able to do that. But if you you got to make the time, these kids like 
I don't know, maybe ask him, but it's hard now, like with him playing college ball, not being able to go see his games, that crushes my soul. But I watch it on TV right. every time. But I know for him it, it makes a difference to look back over his shoulder and know mom's in the stand or his the people who love him or, or support him are in the stands. And for these young kids in, in high school still that don't have that, that's that's sad. But 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 in a different aspect, right? Mm. Think about currently like um, your locker room when you were at Saguaro, mm. okay? The conversations, the atmosphere, the ambience of the locker room at, at Saguaro. The smell. Like, <laughs> the smell. <laughs> it's like, okay, and the smell, or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. But that experience to now where you, when you're at Carroll, what is the atmosphere of that locker room? I mean, is it night and day difference? Night like, and day. Like, are the guys that you're with from Saguaro, which one? Which ones made you feel welcome more, like a brother? Like, like, yo, this is this is this is us. We need to do this. Yeah. When I went on my visit in April, I was already committed, already signed my letter of intent, and whatnot. As soon as I got there, I was welcomed in with open arms from parents, coaches, all the teammates. I mean, just instant conversations like they had already known me. Right. So, and and in the locker room, you know, locker room talk, you know, could get crazy, whatnot. At my school, everyone's bought in. Nobody has negative thoughts, sayings, anything. We're all locked in on just winning football, playing football. And that's Carroll the college, right? Yeah. At Saguaro, I mean, some guys are just there to be cool. Some guys are just playing football to say I play football or my my mom or my dad makes me play football nobody was really bought into winning and i think the record that we had reflected that i mean not everybody was had the same goals and the same path um and some guys you know on rocky roads we had a very young team right so that contributes a lot the coaching um used to be good when i played was not good in those final years of that coaching staff so i mean there's so much that goes on and i think with the program that I was involved in, it all just reflected uh, very well with the record that we had. So, I mean, the locker room talk just wasn't wasn't great. So once again, it's it's a culture thing. Like, 100%. and I'm saying culture like of the school, like these kids need to buy in, People, like the community, everything. You got to buy into it to to, to make it yours, mm -hmm. own it, and then all of a sudden you'll reap the benefits of all that to kind of buy in. Right. Um, being that now that you've had your success, right, and you've gone off to Carroll, are you giving anything back to Saguaro? Or do you want to go in there? Like right now, you're during your, your vacation time, right? Mm -hmm. Have you swung by? And I know Al over there wasn't really your coach. Yeah. Um, he came your senior year or no? Not at all. He was after. After. Yeah. So you haven't really gotten to work with Al and all those guys. But have you swung by and said, hey, this is my my house. This is my house. I want to go back and and maybe donate like while they're doing spring training or training right now while you're home. You ever thought about like, hey, maybe I'll go swing by and and help them out a little bit or talk to the coaches and have you I thought about it. I mean, so much that I've learned within this year being in college. I mean, I've learned a ton of leadership stuff that I right. think, you know, with my team that I played on my senior year had very little leadership even from the seniors and underclassmen. So I think uh leadership is huge in football right and i think i have uh, some knowledge sprinkled knowledge that i could give um i know uh nathan my best friend uh his cousin's still on the team i'll be doing workouts with him right and anyone else who shows up i mean i'm always willing to get work in with those guys i've done it previous years um all throughout covid i've done it i mean i plan on stopping by and seeing what it's like i mean they changed a few things with the weight room and stuff um I want to get in touch with Coach Al for sure, um, because you know that team is something that I was a part of, right. and I think it's always cool to see them succeed, and whatever I can do to help them succeed. I, th I think in you my actually, capability. I think you stopping by and actually offering your time and stuff like that would help that culture. Right. I mean, you're a prime example of you can make something happen no matter where you're at. Mm -hmm. you can make a difference so like i strongly encourage you to swing by and just say hey look you know what i'm just gonna come by and and you know lend a hand today and if you need it tomorrow as long as i'm here you know before i have to go back because obviously when do you go back 
I'll be going back around late July, July 20th, 25th. Oh, so, so you're doing the whole time. Mm. It's like, go ahead, show some love back. To, I mean, we were talking about the change of a culture. Mm-hmm. Be a part of that change. Right. And so I would love to see you go back and rock your Carol gear like every single effing day you do it mm. because you should wear that shirt like a like a badge of honor, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, I really feel like you should rock your Carol gear and let those guys know, hey, my school exists. Everybody else, like, you can make a difference. You, you're you a walking story, a living part of that chapter. Mm-hmm. Why not do that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? For sure, I, I definitely planned on it. Yeah, uh, just getting settled in, got back oh, about I, I, a week and a half, but it's I, definitely on you, you my gotta schedule. Get, you got to get back to the, the the southern like Mexican food and everything else that's here yeah. that's not up there. Not I know not cheese curds, not cheese curds. Yeah, cheese I got curds you. Beer. But like, yeah, no, it's it would it's really cool that you have that chapter of your story that you can share. Mm-hmm. We just talked about that because I just said that to him. I said. We were talking about some kids, and I definitely won't mention names, and, and no, nobody's doing terribly bad. But I did say to him that there were some kids that seriously looked up to Jordan yeah. and, and Cole Gerke. And now that Jordan, <clears throat> excuse me, Jordan and Cole are gone off doing their thing, some of those kids have fallen back, right? And not, and they're not where they could be. Right. And I said they really looked up to you guys. You guys probably need to to pay a visit, and get up there, and see if you can help out. And, um, I mean, even if it's just minuscule, right? Like, oh, yeah. You know, the littlest thing, just to see that it's possible. Just like he said, walk in with your shirt for those kids to see that it's possible. Shake a hand. Dude, um, it's funny, right? Why is it, like, and, and granted, the, the, the <laughs> Bijan deserves the... Uh, the 100%. So happy for the, the Right. Bijan deserves the praises that he's getting. Mm-hmm. But you are on the same pedestal on certain levels. You might not have been that Texas guy or going off to the NFL mm. or whatever the case might be, but you're doing things that a lot of these kids dream and hope that they'll be able to do. Mm. So just you walking in, shaking hands, saying, hey, look, you know, you become exactly what you said earlier in the conversation. You can become that voice to that freshman and that sophomore, like, hey, this is important. Mm-hmm. Can we get past the D1 culture, though? But you know what? I mean, I'll say this. Nobody wants You to. also help that, too. Yeah. You can yeah. also help inflict, like, the, yes, there is the D1-itis, you know? Mm-hmm. But if I were to tell you to, like, you know what? Don't reach for the stars. Just reach for, you know, the clouds. Like, that's not necessarily all the best. Like, yes, go ahead and always shoot to, to go, but let, let's not let's not snarl at opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's the thing point. that pisses me off. It's yeah. like, like, look, look, I get it. You know, everybody wants to be on, and we are ESPN brainwashed. I have no problem saying that. We are. We're yeah. ESPN brainwashed. We want to be the teams that we see on Saturday and like, ah, like, Go, you know, like, it's funny because my brother's a truck driver, right? And he's like, I found my college team. And I was like, well, okay, who is it? He's like, roll tie. And I was like, Alabama. Why? He's like, he's like, no, I just, like, roll tie. I thought it was funny as shit. So I'm like, he didn't care about football. He doesn't. But, like, it's just ingrained into our culture, the schools, the, those top, you know, teams or whatnot. I mean, what kid when you were growing up didn't like Oregon? You know, it's like mm. they got all the cool jerseys, Nike sponsors them, shit like that. Like, or even Arizona for that matter. Hey, Arizona. You know, it's like, okay, cool. You know, but who often, like, if I ask a kid typically, hey, do you know a Division II school near you? No. Nothing. They don't have a clue. Or, or when you talk about, hey, what's Division Three or NAIs? Like, I mean, I hadn't heard of NAIA before this recruiting process right, that I was in. Right. So, like, I mean, you're talking about educating a kid that's not educated. You, we're saying, hey, look, don't know anything about D1, yet they don't know anything else but D1. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's it's there's always that angle. Like, Which, hey, look. Where that... Like he said, that's where you would come in. I mean, you you can stuff. come in and, like, you amongst others that have left, mm-hmm. start a new culture, man. Like, For sure. Like you said, Gurky's here in town, right? Mm-hmm. Is he back? Yep. Yeah, he's back. He's playing somewhere. <laughs> you guys rock up with your jersey. Show these kids, like, hey, you can do it. One of the problems, and it was funny, is because I was just watching David Adam. 
he was in here like uh, doing a show on one of the other on the other podcasts or something like that. And one of the things that he had said was the reason why we like, and he was referring to it as a, a white to a black or whatnot. He said typically um, when you look at certain uh, businesses or whatnot. Sometimes it's, it's hard for a minority to see themselves in that position because they don't see others in that position. Right. Remove ethnicity out of this, okay? Sometimes the kids at your school, at your your in your community, and so on, can't see themselves going to these colleges because they don't see people doing mm -hmm. that. You can be an image of them that says, "Yes, you can do that." You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. So it's really important. I would love to see both of y'all. You and Gurky both? Because a lot of people didn't think you guys was even going to be the ones that go off to college. Mm -hmm. But and you they went. were the only two. The only two, yep. right? Still standing. From right? So not only that, you didn't come right back. Mm -hmm. So with pride, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to tell you, man. Like, for real, walk down to, to Coach Al and say, Al, I know I wasn't one of yours, but so I was one of so worlds. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Right. Uh, you know, let me donate some time or whatever the case is but like i don't want to go too far in preaching on that so let me ask you just because i find this shit funny as hell being your mom having your mom <laughs> and god knows you playing and having her as your mom for four years in high school mm -hmm. what was one of the most embarrassing ass moments that you ever experienced like was she one of those moms that just embarrassed the shit out of you or or like i know i cuss a lot so it doesn't matter it's like a secondhand embarrassment because where her and the rest of my family's from, they're very loud and outspoken yeah, and that's straight to the man. point. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if she saw any kind of flaw or anybody disrespected me or messed with me in the wrong way, it could be the administrator or somebody else. I mean, she voiced her opinion like immediately. It wasn't right. like a, oh, Jordan, what, what happened kind of thing. It was like right. a boom. So, I mean... I can't really think of one exact moment, but I mean, <laughs> he said I can't think of one. He's, he's treading lightly. Too many of them. I mean, can't she, she, she did almost get Lord. ejected at a, at a football game. I did. did you almost get ejected? Oh, yeah. 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 They, yeah, it was against I think Casa Grande. It was. Yeah. No, 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 I, CDO. I it was against CDO them. my sophomore year. I was on JV, and uh, they had this junior that was on varsity, but because of grades, they made him play JV. That makes and, uh, absolutely no sense, but go on. Yeah, it didn't make sense to me either. But uh, me and him were going at it for about the second half of the game. And right. at one point, he like just absolutely, he was on offense and I was playing defensive end and just held the shit out of me. And sh they threw a flag because I got up in his face and she lost her shit. And <laughs> he turned around in the middle of the game and told her if she does not be quiet, they're going to eject her and she has to so leave. So the ref did that? Yeah. Yeah. The ref said, "If you don't be quiet, we're gonna have to eject you." Well, yeah, but that's after I called him a fucking tool. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot of a lot of things that were said to him. <laughs> so he's here, you. Oh, from, he heard me uh, the whole time. Yeah. Oh wow. Pansy, I Gotta called him. Love it. I said, Gotta "Do you need any it. more flags? Because you've run out." I mean, like, yeah. I said, you know, it's laundry day. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I love refs. Uh, I do yeah. love them. Like actually, like several of the guys are. They are. Friends. It's, it's a tough job. Kirby, Kirby oh, is awesome. It's He's a hard cool. job. You can't make anyone happy. No, not at all. But it's even funnier when you got like, like these loud, obnoxious mothers that you're sitting in the stand, like, oh my fucking god. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm he, pretty and, contained. And she, like when he plays, because I'm she, actually she has her moments. On. Yeah. But when you know when they get out of control, that's when I'm gonna. Like, you know, and it, it's hard too because. The one thing, like one of the, one of the crazy things, is, like I've had like a lot of guys like, well, why don't you stand on the sidelines? You know, why don't you do that? You know, where a lot of the media guys are or whatever. I said, like, guys, do you realize all the juicy juice up inside the freaking stands? <laughs> like I'm hearing everything. Like I know all kinds of details and stuff that I don't really want to know. And then plus, people don't really know who the hell I am when I'm sitting up there. Mm -hmm. It's gonna probably obviously end because like eventually people start knowing who I am. But um, it was funny. Cause like I'd hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, that kid sucks, you know. God damn that son oh, yeah. of a bitch! Like, uh, why do they have him out here at this Bleacher position? Bleacher smack. Oh we, we my had god! A lot of Bleacher like, smack going on. oh my god! Like it's funny because like you sit there and you and 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 it's like, I, that's kind of one of the things that I like hearing from the moms is how do you hold your tongue? 
because mm-hmm. they're sitting down there. That's good. The kid damn sucks, you know, or, or like, you know, you hear this, this like, oh, my God, the quarterback sucks or, or oh, my God, the kid can't catch the damn freaking football while he was throwing it to him or why do you keep doing the same play and like all this shit in the stands, man. I mean, it's like a, a like a, like a portal of crap that comes like <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's something with a sewer tank just like right down into the bleaches All and shit like is it's, left it's, at it's the like, gate we don't horrible. bring any but it's so it's funny it, like because i'm like sitting here going like damn you know they were like let's Sorry. be honest like you know they just do like if you mm-hmm. mess up like everybody is everybody's a critic but nobody's there to applaud. But I will say, though, we may talk a lot of shit and, be, you know, say stuff about other kids playing and stuff, but let a kid get hurt. Oh, yeah. Let a kid get hurt. And whether that's your kid or not, everybody stops. Right. And we recognize, that's what I'm saying, we could talk shit all day long, but when a kid gets hurt or something along those lines, or even when a kid does really good that's not your kid, we will right. praise them, too. Right. It's, it's gotta, easy to be a bleacher critic. It is. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, at the same time, it's like, yeah, you're right. I mean... The, the truth is, no matter what kind of story these kids go through or whatnot, like, because you guys went through the kid who got ran over by the truck, Adam. you know, um, uh, just you, nothing brings a community together like a, a like a, a moment, like a crisis or something like that. But the problem is, is like, why aren't we getting pulled together on on just the, the crisis of what is every day? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> we need to make things better. We need to each teach one how to get better mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that i would really love to see and and why i'm, I'm trying to do these kind of things he like, has a lot of work well, for that and not just that but i will say as far as go ahead and vent on tusd let's go to open up back to the education department Order. on tusd my son flourished right okay thought he was doing like he had 4.0 not obviously at when he graduated, like his, you know, I think junior and senior year is 4.0 all the way through. He thought college was going to be a piece of cake. He's like, I got this, my no problem. I'm 4.0. Well, he got his ass handed to him in college because it's you feel not the like, same. Do you feel the curriculums at TUSD did not prepare you for did college? Did not. In a sense, yes, but to perform academically at a collegiate level, no. I mean, you get a general understanding of things, which helps. I mean, if, if you walk in with nothing, it'd be a lot worse. But with the foundation that I had, it helped me survive through college. Because, I mean, I didn't do bad. I mean, yeah, my I GPA is a 3.3 in college, right. which is which is good. But I could have been a lot better had I been more prepared. Let me play devil's advocate on my own self, all right? Do you feel that the curriculum has been tuned or toned down to match those in the community for the community to have success? Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of factors that go into the curriculum. I think with the lack of teachers that we have, the lack of motivated teachers, the lack of motivated administrators that want to help these kids, the lack of kids um, actually wanting to learn and focus in the classroom. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. I think they're all contagious amongst each other. Sure. Because if a kid is eager to learn, a teacher will be eager to teach. Mm-hmm. A, an admission will be able to be initiated to to want to provide the, the things that that teacher needs. And the, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So in all reality, we can point at the administration. We can point our fingers at, at the teachers. We can point our things at everything else. But it's each one of them taking that step. And the majority of those groups, right, the size of those groups is actually the students. So the more students that are actually involved in wanting to learn, Mm -hmm. let me put the most, the seniority on top of them, because if they came in prepped and this goes, this is not a high school thing. This is a, it's a kindergarten, elementary and a parenting thing to educate and get our kids all prepared for each year to want to succeed. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes easier for all those involved. Sure. So, I mean, it's, I'm glad that you threw the students in that conversation because you were saying like, hey, look, da da da. We do have to provide an atmosphere yeah. that these kids feel that they're no like. You go to a new school, right? Like a Micah Mountain or something like that, and they have the new facilities, the new this, the new that, and that. And that's, you're going to feel like your atmosphere, your mm-hmm. environment. So when a school district's environment does not give a shit then it kind of tells the kids we don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And that's the biggest problem when I rant about TUSD. It's like, hey, look, we need to do simple things. You know, I'm not asking for, you know, let's, you know, go redo everything. It's but some of the so for Jordan, he he all of his high school years were here. He I grew up in New York. Okay. New okay. York is where the state taxes pay for the schools, right? No ands, this or but it about it, state taxes go for the schools. You don't walk inside a school in New York anywhere and find a trash school. It's beautiful from head to toe. Okay. He's never been exposed to that. So he never had any understanding of it because he was out here and previous to here, he was in Florida. So he's not been exposed. But to our tax, the state taxes pay for our schools here. It did, no. It's paying for the superintendent's pockets as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so what better. you're saying is, isn't that it, it does pay for the school, but how the school district Utilizing is utilizes it, the money right. is it's the difference. It's nothing okay. the same. It's absolutely well, nothing which, the Which same. brings me back to the, the topic that we often talk about, which is when you go to a football game for TUSD, mm -hmm. every school that is involved in TUSD, they collect the money and then they evenly divide it amongst 10 different wrong. entities. It's wrong. Which I feel is completely wrong. And for those that don't know, what happens or what I'm trying to say is this is that if I'm at Pueblo or if I'm at Tucson High or if I'm at, you know, Saguaro or Sabino or any of those, when you go and you go to the gate and you pay your money to get into the school, that money does not go to the school directly. It goes to a TUSD pot right. and then they divide it amongst their nine schools and their athletic department. To right. the best of my knowledge, that that is correct. But I don't to think the best it's divided equally because if you compare the schools and who's got what, well, all the schools basically have the same shit. Uh, there's some school at Sabino's far Just better position. Kind of that might be their booster club, though. That Could might be, be other things that are donating to that program. Because I mean, I will say this is that the reason why they have a concession stand, or I mean, a press box, is because I believe their booster club yeah. and the school actually did, did that. It, it's not that, and then the the whole thing with the Tucson High Field is because um, they actually was it's through a some kind of situation that they got that field. But at least clean up what you got. Well, can we update trash. certain things? Like it looks like a Saguaro. I went and graduated Saguaro in 1993. It looks the same. Same. Yep, nothing's it's dirty, changed. The weight room is sad, the same. It's depressing. The newest addition is probably the basketball court. I mean, right, the, the basketball the, court's nice with the bleachers and everything, but right. field's the same, stands are the same, everything's the same, nothing's changed. So, he's he's got to see it now being in in Wisconsin out there, which is further east, and their their schools out there are extremely well kept. Again, different different state, different investment, but they invest in it, and out here they're just not. I mean, well, you got to look at Carol. Like, they want kids to come to their school, mm. so what do they do? They invest in the things that kids want, the shiny things, the the football fields that's going to draw the athlete, the weight room that's going to draw the athlete, the you know the all the the, the 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 campus. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Because when I come and visit, I want to see things that are going to draw and make me feel ex like. This is where I need to be. Right. I'm investing in this school. It has to be. So why are we not doing that in our schools? Is the, the the public schools here, our high schools? Which is my next question. Is like, why aren't we? Why are we not investing in like the football field? That's what draw kids to their football. I think it's uh, too broad of a question. Oh yeah, to absolutely. be to be answered like directly. Yeah. I think there's no, just so right. much that goes Political. into it, and Political. and with Saguaro specifically. I really couldn't answer your question as to why we haven't made these changes. Because my senior year, we raised or we tried to raise enough money to get a turf field, to get a press box, to get all those things. We just couldn't. I mean, we get about, I think, five footballs a year from the school. And that's it. Right. Well, Nothing let else. me talk about that because we could have <laughs> used money towards the, the, new, the new field and whatnot. But the decision was made to buy these new uniforms that – are not e they weren't even allowed to be used okay so we spent eight something grand if not more ten grand on gray uniforms that have not been worn again because they're they're not allowed what whatever the terminology is for it I, I, I don't know but it didn't meet the statute for AIA and they were not that's not our school colors so we bought uniforms and I, I would question whether or not it's the AIA or if it's a TUSC it probably field. both but all that money was spent on the money that we raised as parents from his last year and right never so, wore them. never wore them no and well, you can't 
We, you we wore did, once, but we, I'm saying this yeah, year, they we, haven't worn them. We they wore them a couple out. times my senior year. I didn't really, due to me being in my season and with academically, I didn't watch a ton of games from Saguaro right. um, this last year. So I can't really speak on if they did wear them. Right. But I do know that you know, we did spend a ton of money on new uniforms, which was needed. I mean, when you're wearing uniforms from before the 2010s, it's not really ideal. Right. So it was a good thing to get that. But there's just a long list of things that need to be bought and paid for through that school. And, and I'm, and I'm going to hope that, I mean, obviously, hands have changed now at the head coach situation. And I'm not saying it was a McKee negative. Mm -hmm. But now that things have changed over, hopefully um, Al will, will take things and, and run with them and make them better. Mm -hmm. um, I think he tends to put the right coaching staff around over there. I think he's trying to do his best that he can. I'm a fan of Al's. I mean... He's a great guy. I like him. I think he's bringing so much to the table for these kids. My and, opinion. And I was I was a fan of McKee to certain levels, you know? I mean, I, I'm not going to... I can't I can't bash on somebody who's spending their time and, and with the kids, even though we can sit there and cr critique them. I mean, at one point, he was a coach of the year. So, right. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. we can always find flaws in everybody. And I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. That's, and his hands were tied, too. I will defend him in that. His right. hands were tied. I, I will not. I'm not. It's not my job to, to bash yeah. on people or anything like that. But uh, what I want to do is obviously my whole thing is to just try to uplift him. One thing that I do always want to say is this is like we could be doing simple things that makes everything better. Um, one of my big preaches and, and, and complaints have always been rosters. Oh, God. Like, get the rosters for these schools filled out, I right? I had to do that last year because I ran. I did their social media and stuff, and the rosters were wrong every time. Every time. Num rosters were wrong. Numbers on the jerseys were wrong. Stats, Stats were, were wrong. a big thing. I mean, Kids I've never returned wrong. a punt in my life, and I had about 260-something punt return yards, which is but, cool. I mean, it's, it's cool to tell people control. that, but I, like, Wait a minute. I, don't, I don't return punts. So, I mean, stats matter. To a certain amount, college coaches look at that stuff. Well, and some do, some don't. Like we, can, once again, we can always do the half empty, half full kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what frustrates me too is like you got recognized uh, you for a long snapper, mm -hmm. second yeah. second team, first first, first team. team, first team, first team, team long snapper for your region, mm -hmm. and you snapped the ball how many times? I mean, all season up until the point I got injured. But it was more so not because like I did good at that. Because, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know you can be good at long snapping. That's why there's right. NFL long snappers and whatnot. But, I mean, that was more so because I didn't get to finish the season. So it was like a sympathy kind of thing. Like, we feel bad for you. So Coach McKee really pushed to get me so like, recognized in some way. On, on, on hands, it was, it was actually a great gesture. Mm -hmm. But at the right. same time, it wasn't really a true gesture. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, does, is that fair to say? Yeah, Accurate. 100%. Um, but I sit there and I think sometimes when we're doing these um, these assessments, like, hey, look, it's like I think sometimes what we're doing is just trying to put names in a hat and just kind of plug them into things that are kind of close to what they did. Like we, You need to be plugged for the work that you've done, I, right? I, I, like, like I really want to say, hey, look, man, sometimes we got to really make these achievements rather than, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? look, at, look at Cole Gerke also known as Nate Kirky, he had the highest stats for tackles. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jordan, but he had the high, and I, and I know this because I was posting him. For Saguaro. For Saguaro in his senior year, and he didn't make first teams. Hmm. He was just, he was All an right. honorable mention. We, we need to, we need to. We, you need to bring Do better. That, we need to I'm do saying. better. Bring we, it up. We just need to do better. And, 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 you know, it is what it is on that. Um, Give it where it's earned is all what I'm saying. Right, I get I you. I it. get you. Um, and, and trust me, I get it. It's it's frustrating because, like, there are parents that will turn around and they'll hit me up like, hey, what the hell? You know, how does this really work? Like, this doesn't make any damn sense. Mm -hmm. And I got to sit there like, I wasn't there. Right. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. I regurgitate information. I'm like, I don't know. Like, does that make sense to me or not? No. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. But it's not, I'm not a part of that That. That council, that that you know, the the selective on that process. No, but it's right back now. to the trophy mentality again. Well, right? well how, I, I, and I can agree with that, yeah. and I can say, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, it is a little bit of trophy kind of situations and stuff like that. But I mean, 
you know, you, you, we need to do stuff to, to plug these kids better, Absolutely. like in the right way. Mm -hmm. And uh, TUSD yeah. needs to be a huge part of that. And, and the coach, some of the coaches too. Get, these kids, Al, I will say that for Saguaro, mm -hmm. Al has been helping the kids get um, seen and get <clears throat> like one of, one of the young gentlemen, um, Kingston just got an offer, uh, Kingston to Arizona Christian University, right? No recruiter, but Al's helping them do that. Right. So that's great. I was that's just what coaches Kingston. should be doing. Mm -hmm. I was with Kingston yesterday. Yeah, good And kid. it's funny because he comes up to me and he kind of like, hey, and, you know, he starts talking to me. And I'm sitting there going, all right, like, let me take you to 101 camp. And, and this is where I go back to that whole thing. It's like we're not teaching the kids that the most important part of the camp is actually the end of the camp. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great that you go out there and you got the t-shirt and you run in and all that stuff. But talk. if you're not talking at the end and going, Hey, look, you know what? Hi, my name is this is I'm, I'm here at this school. Da, da, da. Oh, can I get your information? And then exchanging information, getting those Twitter accounts, getting him the, the, the coach to follow you and then building that relationship from that day. Like taking the picture. I remember like I must have told five, six kids out there last night. You're like, hey, did you get pictures? Why do I need pictures? I said, because if you don't got pictures, it never happened. Mm -hmm. yep. It never happened. So, yeah, you need to go out. That's what I told him. When we first started doing the camps, he said, if you bring your ass back to these bleachers and you don't have contact names, phone numbers, business card, Twitter handle, or have taken a picture, don't come back. Don't yeah. come back. Because you better it, stay out there. I mean, it's so vital. I mean, if they don't know who you are, I mean, if you just, if you do the break and you go back up to the bleachers and go home, they never know who you are. I mean, you can try and hit them up on Twitter, but I mean, if you directly go up to them, shake their hand, talk to them, talk a little bit about their program, I mean, you're showing interest right. and now they're interested in you. Right. This person's interested in my program, now I'm going to be interested in him. I mean, it's a, it's a two-way street if you just think you're just miraculously going to wake up one day and they're just going to... All these coaches are going to love you. I mean, you're just feeding yourself. Well, it's funny lives. because I had a kid come up to me and he was like, I said, did, did, you, did you get your pictures and information and stuff? No, nah, I, I didn't do well. I didn't do well at all today. I was like, you think they remember that? Mm -hmm. no. They don't remember. Like, unless you stood the hell out and they were so lot like, like I want this kid yeah. and I want this like so bad. Like, if you're not that kid, they don't remember. So I was like, so go make them remember. Go go up and ask. Go say, hey, did I find out that information? And it's all about building relationships once again. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to go build a relationship, cool. Stay home. Because yeah. all you're doing is taking reps away from a kid that wants to build a relationship. Exactly. So you're not serious. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to roll your eyes, man, I don't know why I'm here. Shit, what's the point of me being at this camp? Then stay home. Stay home. Mm -hmm. Save your mom and dad the money. You know, you could you save could. your energy for a video yeah. game. Yeah. Because it, it does. It comes down to grades. It comes down to the box that you're in. Yep. And it comes down to your social capabilities. And can you socialize and mingle with these coaches? If you ain't hungry, get out of the freaking buffet line, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's because you know how it is. You get it to like, you remember this too. Don't tell me you don't either. So mm -hmm. you get up there and you're, you're at the camp, right? And you're in line. Tell me that one of them son of bitches won't come up and just take your rep. <laughs> Yes. They will take your rep. It's a huge thing. I mean, it, the first couple of camps, it took me a minute to uh, realize, you know, reps are so valuable. And in camps, big camps like the Lake Forest camp and some other camps, you may get one, two, three reps. Oh, yeah, there's 700 kids out there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're not fighting for those reps, and I mean, like, physically putting yourself in that position to get those reps, you'll never get them. Nope. You're just wasting your own opportunity. I love that, dude, because, like, it's true. Like, you're that parent, right? I'm parents, I'm, I'm, I'm creating, right? That's I'm trying to create the moment here. <laughs> your parents is up there, and they got the little, I'm waiting for Ricky to go, all yeah. this other stuff, right? And they wait, and they wait. Oh, it's, he's coming up, he's coming up. No, uh, maybe next time. Okay. Here comes David. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> it's not my kid. Well, it's like, and all of a sudden your son starts moving back in the line. Like, it's like, how the hell is he not going? Like, why isn't he going? Because the parents are sitting there like, because they're like, you know, they're waiting. Cameras rolling, all that stuff, right? And then your ass don't go. And it's like, they don't understand. It's like, yo, them motherfuckers just took my shit. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, they just took your how shit. How many times did I yell at you for that? I said, get 
your ass to the front of the line. A lot. And go. But I mean, even getting those reps is always good, but it also shows confidence. Like, if, oh yeah, if cocky if little son of a bitch. You should always yeah. be very confident in your own game. Because right. I mean, it, it spreads. I mean, when coaches uh -huh. see this guy, even if you're not the best athlete in the world, if you're showing confident in your own game and willing to learn, because they're teaching you these things as you get these reps. If you never go, you're never getting taught. Right. You're never running through, refining yeah. your own game. Thank you. Thank you. So for it shows so much confidence uh -huh. stepping up. And, you know, a lot of these camps, like the U of A camp that I went to twice, you're going up against JUCO guys. Right. My first rep was against the JUCO safety right. that ended up going on D1. I could have easily just been like, nah, I'm going to leave that for the other guy. But I was confident enough to say I can learn something from this. I ended up winning the rep, and I learned a lot. So, I mean, it's, it's big showing confidence and willingness to learn to these coaches. They recognize it immediately. Well, and I, and I get frustrated, too, because, like, there, there's, there's little things you can do to stand out, okay? One thing I hate is the accessory kit. Mm -hmm. Okay? I know the a few of those. The accessory kit. No comment. And love you, parents. I love you to no death. No comment. But I had a kid, like, we was watching them yesterday, and I'm sitting with a coach. I mean, not a coach, but one of the parents. Actually, it's a world parent. I'll tell you all. Who later? I'm pretty sure um, I know. So I'm sitting with him, and we're watching these kids. I said, "Son of a bitch!" I said, "Look, the kid right here, he's got a hat on. Mm -hmm. What the hell? You got a hat on when you're in an uh, you're in an audition? Mm -hmm. You're here for a resume audition, right? You trying to get a job? That's what you're trying to do. You got your hat crooked. He's doing his little thing and so on and so on. I was like, "Good Lord, don't let me see some ski goggles." And don't let me see something else out here. Like, it is not a seven-on-seven -seven tournament. Now, those are different. Go ahead and have fun. A little bit, but I still have those my opinions on those. Those are still frustrating to me, yeah. too. Don't oh, get me wrong. The face paint, the, 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 whole, the whole shebang. I mean, like, like God. now, there was a different thing, right? So my son, he would always wear a hoodie. And so they called oh, him the hoodie kid. Yeah. Right? He was, it was his hoodie. Now, it would be July. Hoodie. I never, like, it was funny as coach because, um, funny as hell, because coach um, Pat Nugent come up to me, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, is he wearing a hoodie? It's July. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, coach. And then when they were done, he was like, he come over and he took the hoodie off and pulled a different hoodie out of the bag and put the other hoodie on mm -hmm. because the other one was sweaty. So he switched them. Right. And like, and we're looking, I'm like, are you seriously wearing a hoodie? And it's funny because... Toby Borgay came up to me and goes, your son was the hoodie kid. I said, yes. Like, my son would repetitively go to camps wearing hoodies. Mm -hmm. But do you know why he wore hoodies? Because they saw him in a hoodie. No, not at all. My son went to, like, wore hoodies all the time because they covered his arms, and he was embarrassed of how skinny his arms were. Oh, mm -hmm. really? So he wore it out of, like, a whole, like, like uncomfort situation mm -hmm. he wore the hoodie because he was un unconfident about his arms right because i mean he became a long long big kid you know mm -hmm. tall kid so on so like he would wear it to cover his arms but everybody would know him as like ah he's a hoodie kid it was like yeah yeah he's a hoodie kid but like and then he started getting really well recognized to some because like they would be amazed on how some he'd catch these balls. It's like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, he wore the hoodie to cover his arms. Now he doesn't wear hoodies anymore, which which is That's good. You know, it's I mean he's a hell lot bigger now. But but like yeah, like it was not like a trait that that so it's one thing to have traits like that. Mm -hmm. All right, you you're not confident about something. I get that. But if you're rocking the sunglasses and stuff, you're trying to draw attention to yourself. And by God, if you draw attention to yourself, you better fucking back it up. Yeah. Like, if you're wearing all the, like, <laughs> there was a kid. God bless you, Mike Masinis. I'm going to say this. <laughs> um, so for Do you know who Mike Masinis is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I love Mike Masinis. He's actually now over at New Mexico State, right? Good for him. Um, went to Hamilton, all that other stuff. But when he was younger and he would go to... Um, he would play seven on seven. Like I would call him the ornament kid because mm. it's almost like he went to Dick's Sporting Good and bought something out of every aisle mm. and wore it. Like he had the Oakley glasses, gloves, you know, anything. Like 
anything you could attach yourself. Like he was the was it called the Centurions when they were like when yeah, we were yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, little, yeah. little yeah, guys yeah. that had the like clamps on. I don't know if you ever watched that cartoon, but there was a thing called Centurions, and like it would assemble all the things <laughs> it would need for certain like 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 adventures or whatever cases. Mm. Yeah, he was a mo like but like I mean he grew up to be a hell of an athlete, you know, obviously or whatnot. Sure. I mean but, it's one but thing it's to look funny. good, feel good, play good. But yeah. I mean there's always <laughs> that, but it's like <laughs> But you can't be wearing every ornament on the on the tree. Like yeah. talking to some coaches, back. I mean it kind of shies them away sometimes because right. you you get seen as a materialistic kid. Gotcha. And if you're a materialistic kid I mean, that just kind of brings a lot of other problems that some, I don't know the philosophy behind it, but coaches just figure that just doesn't correlate mm -hmm. well with football. You're drawing attention I mean, if to you're yourself. worrying too you. much about yourself, how are you going to ever worry mm -hmm. about the team? Right. I mean, so, I mean, I, I wear a few things. I mean, uh -oh. I don't I don't really do anything crazy, just wrist tape or whatnot. But, I mean, I, I'd never put on, like, the, the arm sleeve with the Oakley glasses and the war paint all over my war face. face the calf sleeve. Uh, I mean, I whatever helps you play to it. the best ability. But, I, I mean, like it. you said, if you're going to wear all that, and you're going to bring that attention, you better, better perform. Be ready. It's better. And then they got that the, their, their seven on seven helmet all crooked and it's not even strapped and uh -huh. it's like falls off yeah. every time they play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. I love you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> love, I love my seven on seven guys. Um, nah, but what else? Like, was is there anything else that you guys are thinking or? No. Like, what would covered you? Covered a lot. I know. We actually did. We covered a lot of things. We did. I'm like sitting here trying to find out like how long we've been going. I don't even know. Good. About an hour. About an hour, yeah. It's been about an hour. So let me, let me, I will ask you this. Like, you arrive, I mean, obviously Carol being a good distance in Illinois, right? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, my bad, right mm -hmm. next to each other. Um, the experience, like like the the dorm rooms, the the what's your day like? I mean, give give me a little, give me a how how did how did you get your feet wet over here? Yeah, so you show up and you immediately start fall camp, which is the most fun I've ever had playing football ever. I mean, it's football all day. I mean, you're like an NFL athlete. All you know is football all day from 7 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Right. Which is an experience that you don't get in high school. But when you get to college and you get to fall camp, it's really, really unique and interesting. It sucks. It's hot. It's humid out. You're running around. It's, It sucks when you're doing it, but it's cool to look at it after. But, I mean, you're in a dorm room with – another person and me growing up it's just been me and my mom so i've always had my own room so it's interesting seeing that getting that experience of having a roommate um hopefully if you do go to college luck out with a good roommate right um because sometimes you get very bad and messy roommates um but that was interesting and i mean just the whole college life i mean you're very independent so everything you do, mom's not there behind you or dad's not there behind right. you guiding you all the way. I mean, you're just kind of let loose in college, which is so. So what helps with the motivation for school? With school? I mean, you know, just knowing that, you know, I mean, there's obviously a standard with my team, a certain GPA we have to meet. But I mean, she she pushes me a lot and my whole I'll just call it a team She's team of people. She's some hot. Hundred miles away, yeah, hundreds of miles away. Uh -huh. How is she? I know she pushes you because she's on the phone, yeah. but like you still got to find that inner motivation to do it, right? I mean, just to not let myself down, right? Not let down, like I was saying, the team of people around me, right? I wouldn't say it's so much expectation, but in a way, it is. I mean, I'm she expects me to be great because she knows I can be great, if that makes sense. So, I mean, me personally, I know I can be extremely great. If I just work hard enough to do it, and if I slack off academically, that helps me slack off football-wise and physically and mentally. I mean, I'm just going to become a bum if I just don't do what I need to do in my eyes. So that's how I see it. It's good that, like, for instance, you just kind of just go, go, yeah. go, go throughout I mean, the day. There's no matter where you get with success, there's always room for improvement. Right. There's always opportunities to get better and never settle is kind of how I see it. I mean, you can always do one more of something, one more rep, you know, one more assignment, you know, just keep pushing, get through your day. I really hope you go over and inspire some of your swirl, like your, your kids. 
Like, yeah. I really do. I really hope you you call up, like, after here or whatever, call up Gurky and go, hey, look, man, let's go help them out, like, mm-hmm. throughout the summer. Like, I really, I really – and, dude, hit me up and let me know. I will come. And, like, if I got to, like, like – Film it, shoot it. I will come and show some support as best the way that I can. For sure. Because, like, I really, I want to see the change. Mm -hmm. And it's really important for kids to hear your story and the struggles and everything to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know. Like, like I'm sitting up there. It was funny as hell, right? I go to Adam State with Caleb. And we go into the, the dorm room. And first thing I want to do is turn on the AC. I'm, I'm one of those people, like, that got to be a, a fan turn in or something. Mm-hmm. I can't have, like, still rooms. Like, in the, if the AC wasn't pumping, I, like, I know it's off right the second. But, mm-hmm. like, if it's not, like, I go nuts. Oh, I just you don't. wouldn't be able to survive menopause, buddy. Well, you know, <laughs> that's why I'm a woman. I'm, I'm, I identify. Uh, no, uh, that's, no, that's the, I'm, I'm, yeah. Anyways, um, stop it. You need to stop it. Um, but like we go in there and I'm like, where's the fuck you? AC. AC. And I go and I'm looking and I'm like, this thing's broken. It don't work. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I realized they don't have one. Mm-hmm. They don't. Me neither. So you guys go out and you get the little box fans and you put them in the windows, right? Mm-hmm. See? See how yeah. Like, I'm like, this is so randomly weird for me because we've, I've lived here for a long time. So it's like real interesting to hear the stories like you guys Hey, what did you find? What did you do? How do you prepare a kid or a parent, you know, when they're ready to move their kids off into a, a dorm room? You have so many pieces of puzzles. And that's how I started So AZ in the first place, is as I was learning the pieces of puzzle, I was bringing them out to the parents. Mm-hmm. So don't let me or anybody else down by not sharing your stories. Mm-hmm. Because even though... You might not be a Bijan or something like that. Mm-hmm. You have you have elements of the story that we 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 could all enjoy and learn from you. Mm-hmm. So like seriously, like hey, look, I know it was hard, but I needed to get a job right away. If you needed a job, I mean, obviously you kind of you don't need one necessarily. You're a lot more focused on the school, but some of these kids. No, he worked when he was there. So you're working. Mm-hmm. Where were you working? Um, as an assistant for the athletic training group. Oh, okay. So I'd work some sports so games. So something or, within the, the, the campus room. and yep. the, in the yeah. department. It's Perfect. a work study job. They give you a scholarship for it. So what are you going to school for anyway? Uh, criminal justice with a minor in psychology. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So are you planning on coming back to Tucson when you're done or are you? Yeah, I, I do plan on coming back for a little bit. It's kind of way out. I mean, throughout my whole high school, I planned out going through high school and college. I got that far. Planning out for life is a lot harder than it is for college. Stop so, it. stop. Uh, it's way hard. I don't want to hear that shit. So I don't. I don't really know where I'll be, but I'm sure I'll come back. Because I mean, my my biggest dream is to coach, and hopefully one day I can coach for a Saguaro, maybe down the line, right? Which would be cool. But you might not two, want the Tucson job. would be somewhere <laughs> I'd I'd probably come back to for a little bit. I don't know if I'd stay. Right, and you know, and yes, give back to the school. Mm-hmm. Like and that's why I'm saying, like even right now with the whole thing, I keep telling you to do. Is if we if you're doing it and we could get some of these other people like like Makai who was just on here, if he goes out there and he comes back to visit his parents, give back to Sunnyside. Mm-hmm. That could become one of the coolest parts of the year. Could be summer. Why? Because I get to hang out with some of the old alums that have gone off to play football. They're teaching me all this stuff. Mm-hmm. They're telling us how important school is. They're making a change in our community. Mm-hmm. So be that change, man. Yeah, that's for sure. that's the biggest thing for me. Um, but other than that, will you kind of win it out? I mean, this is your show, so actually, it's not. <laughs> no, it's your show. Mm, I guess if you put it that it's way, it's yours and your mom. I'm trying to like showcase mom. It's like mom. I, we already kind of went over. She has some little. Do you have any stories? Like, what, what's your good, your best mom story on here? Like, keep like, it PG. <laughs> ah, hell no. We don't for do PG. Football? Yeah, what was the one that you're like, oh, my God, I remember one day, like, I come down off that bleacher and pull Jordan by the back of his neck so quick. <laughs> I have. I mean, there was a couple, because I, I, I'm i aggressive. I'm in a very Stop. aggressive, yeah, a very aggressive and You wouldn't person. understand menopause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he does have a lot of my traits, but he's much more contained than I am, 
which I like. I appreciate that in him. He's he's definitely able to contain that. But he's come off the field a few times, and I've grabbed him by the collar. I'm like, why didn't you just fucking pancake them? Like, smack them. To, what were you doing? And he's like, Mom, my job line stops here. This is like... That wasn't my job. And I was like, I don't care. Like, you could have just smacked the shit out of him. Why didn't you do that? And he's like. <laughs> In the beginning, she didn't really understand <laughs> football. Didn't. I'm like, Get just him. take him out, you know? So and she thought I should just be killing everybody. Because uh, that's what I, well, I played basketball. And I was a center. And I. Because you're a tall lady yourself. They, yeah, I was very aggressive. They nicknamed me animal. Well, I was over six foot. And. As you age, Chris, which you will soon find out, you uh, shrink. You're not older than me by much. I think we I are. am. What? How old are you? Fifty. No, we're freaking the same oh, age. Oh, we are. All right. Since when you get to my age, well, it's you like, shrink. When you so get I, when I you get as like, fat as just, I do, you start shrinking over earlier. You know what? You know what I want to hear. The moment you start weighing more, you start kind of like. Like going in all the directions the same way. <laughs> it's like you're kind of like hunch over. It's like you, you know, do. Well, yeah, 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 but yeah. Yes, I, th I think I shrunk. Shut, a shut up! Bit. I don't want to hear that shit. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I played sports too all my life, but I was just very aggressive, right extremely. On. And he's very well contained, and he does he does good with that. He can. Well, I want to say, I'm I'm so proud of you, man. I appreciate so, it. Like. I know I was there at the, your signing thing and everything else, but in, in all reality, I know Rodney helped you a lot and so on, mm -hmm. but That's you helped yourself a lot mm -hmm. by doing what you were asked to right. by him and so on. But, but so it is, it is, nobody can do the schoolwork except for you. Mm -hmm. Nobody could give you the opportunities you got except for you. So, you know, hats off to what you were able to achieve. I appreciate that. So I want to see you succeed. Come back. Obviously, let us know where we can stream. And feel free when you go to a stream of his to tag, like oh, post tag it up okay. on Facebook and tag like me on it. Got because it. then everybody who's maybe flipping is like, well, let me go. Let me go check this Carol school out and mm -hmm. watch that Carol. And I, I saw that Levi kind of chimed in. Rodney chimed in. And I'm trying to see who the other one is. I can't read it. Diego, Diego, somebody. I don't know which Diego that was. Um, but, yeah, so we'll get more. A lot of people were, like, kind of coming in and out, but a lot of people watch these afterwards. So yeah. mm -hmm. It uh, is Sunday. People are heck yeah. doing family and God things. I know. I got to go to a – I am going, actually, to a graduation party thing that, that, that somebody invited me to who is off to, I believe, Adam State. Okay. Oh, cool. So um, he was one of Rodney's kids as well. Um, Congratulations if you do watch this. Yeah. So it was, it's, it's cool. I know, like, I get invited to some, and if I'm all over the place, sometimes I forget. So I tell these parents, please remind me of your guys' events because I do forget them. But other than that, guys, yeah, uh, another great show. I was glad to. Thanks for having me. Kind of yeah, appreciate guys your stuff. time. Oh, yeah. don't worry about my time. I'm, I'm, I'm taking yours. But other than that, you guys good? Yeah, we're good. All right. See you guys. We're out.